Please be seated. <clears throat> Graduates, honored guests, faculty, staff, families, and friends, Welcome to the graduation ceremony for the Stanford Graduate School of Business. <laughs> Maya Angelou, the great poet, joined Twitter when she was in her 80s. Perhaps not surprisingly, she turned out to have a gift for it. The year before she died in 2013, she tweeted, this is a wonderful day. I've never seen this one before. I feel like that too. This is a wonderful day, a unique day, and I'm glad we're here together. I'd like to begin by recognizing some of the people who are here. Today, we have more than 500 students graduating from the MBA, MSX, and PhD programs. Let's hear it for our graduates. <laughs> GSB faculty and staff have played a pivotal role in the experience of our students. Could I ask the faculty and staff to stand for a moment of thanks? We are also joined by families and friends who have provided support, advice, and most importantly, love. Let's take a moment to recognize our families and friends. A graduation ceremony is about celebrating what you've achieved and what you will go on to do. This year, we have to start by recognizing the extraordinary period during which you have been students at the GSB. It is unlike any other class. So in keeping with the theme of this year's GSB show, let's circle back. <laughs> Two years ago, many of you decided to come to business school in the early days of the global pandemic. There was enormous uncertainty. There was no imminent vaccine, it wasn't clear how the program would go, when we would resume classes in person, what would happen to the job market or your careers. And when you arrived in September 2020, the signs were not auspicious. Orientation and classes were on Zoom. There were strict rules. We had to close the J. McMack laundry room. California wildfires filled the air with smoke and even turned the sky red. Let's not forget the campus blackout the first week. Your start was like the beginning of a dystopian novel. <laughs> and yet, you made the experience your own. You figured out how to learn, to make friendships, even to take the occasional trip off campus, <laughs> of which no more will be said. Arguably, enforcing more small group interactions, the adverse conditions brought you closer together. They might even have led to a few marriages. The pandemic improved with the rollout of the vaccines and things improved at the GSB. We moved back to in-person classes. We removed the zip ties that kept the outdoor furniture six feet apart. We had speakers, conferences, class receptions. This year, the energy of the GSB campus was electric. Every year, the GSB faculty and staff gain a sense of the graduating class, their spirit and their character. One thing we will remember about the class of 2022, your sense of appreciation. This year, like never before, students, 
all of us, have appreciated the opportunity of being at Stanford. It brings up an important point. Perspective matters. This is a wonderful day. I've never seen this one before, Maya Angelou wrote. It's easier to appreciate the ordinary, the usual, the plentiful, when we have experienced the alternative. So yes, part of your experience here has been practice in dealing with uncertainty, ambiguity, even loss, and creating your own unique experience in the midst of sometimes suboptimal conditions. And part of it has been emerging from that experience with energy, optimism, and appreciation. That will serve you extraordinarily well in your careers and lives. During your time here, you also have had the opportunity to think about the leaders that you want to be and the leaders that the world needs. You are graduating at a time of enormous change, an acceleration of digital technology, a rethinking of work, a recognition that business must help to solve the biggest challenges of our time. It is a moment when your Stanford education and leadership skills will be most valuable. I hope that as you leave, you will put them to use in ways that are filled with meaning and contribute to the greater good. I'd like to close by again quoting Maya Angelou. My wish for you is joy. When you wish someone joy, you wish peace, love, prosperity, health, happiness, all the good things. Congratulations again, class of 2022. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce Teresa Gao. Teresa is a pioneering venture capital investor and the founder of Acrew Capital. Teresa was born in Jakarta and immigrated to the United States as a child settling outside Buffalo, New York. She studied engineering at Brown before receiving her MBA here at Stanford. After the GSB, Teresa's career took her first into consulting, then software entrepreneurship, and then venture capital. She has been a partner at Excel, a founder of Aspect Ventures, and most recently, the founding partner of Acru, where she launched the Acru Diversify Capital Fund. Over 20 years, Teresa has been recognized as one of the world's leading investors. She has been named nine times to the Forbes Midas list as one of Time Magazine's most influential minds in tech and to the Carnegie Foundation's list of distinguished immigrants. Teresa serves on the corporation of Brown University and has been deeply involved at the GSB as a lecturer, a volunteer, and a member of the GSB's advisory council. Please join me in welcoming Teresa Gao. All right. Thank you, everyone. A little shorter than the dean. Got to move the mic down. All right. Hi. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dean Levin, Board of Trustees, GSB Advisory Council, distinguished faculty and administration, and most of all, to the class of 2022. Thank you for having me here today. I'm truly honored, but I'm not gonna lie. I'm also a little terrified, because we know how hard GSB students can be. <laughs> <laughs> I've given a lot of speeches in my life, but this is my first commencement speech. And I've been told this is the first time an Asian American immigrant has given this speech here. Zero pressure, right? <laughs> I was in full-on panic mode until suddenly it dawned on me. I 
had no idea who spoke at my graduation. <laughs> True story. So that took some pressure off. I tried to do some research, but it predated Internet Archive, so it was pretty hard. Anyway. <laughs> but even if you don't remember my name, I do hope you'll remember what I talk about. Today, I want to talk to you about wealth, specifically your wealth, and how you and your future companies can make a lot of it. A whole bunch of you just started paying attention. <laughs> the reason I want to talk to you about wealth today is because I know you will be involved in creating a great deal of it for many people. How do I know this? Look at where we are sitting today. We are sitting in the epicenter of Silicon Valley, and you are about to graduate from the best business school in the world. Your location and education practically guarantee that you will have an impact on shareholders and wealth creation. And I have a few tips on how best to do that. See, it turns out my job as a venture capitalist investing in tech companies when they're startups gives me a unique perspective. Venture-backed companies have been the largest engine of job creation and wealth creation in the United States. When I was sitting in your seat, I honestly never imagined that I'd be part of an ecosystem that was creating trillion-dollar market value companies. In fact, the idea of working in venture wasn't even on my radar before I came to the GSB. As the dean said, I was born in Jakarta, Indonesia, and my parents and I emigrated to the US to escape persecution of the ethnic Chinese after a political regime change. We ended up in New York, Middleport, New York, to be exact. Don't worry, I've barely heard of it, and I lived there for 12 years. It's a tiny village outside Buffalo, by the way. When we first arrived in the US, my mom and dad worked at my uncle's Chinese restaurant as a waitress and a dishwasher until my parents were able to put my dad through dental school and open up a practice. My mom was my dad's office manager. My parents worked tirelessly so my younger sister and I could live a better life and live the American dream. They sacrificed a lot, so they expected us to work really hard in return. In fact, I remember one time in middle school when I got an A minus. My dad was not happy. I was like, Dad, that's a pretty good grade. He said, Teresa, an American A minus is like a Chinese F. I was tempted to correct him and that the phrase was a B is an Asian F, but fortunately for me, I had held my tongue. My parents' encouragement eventually paid off because, as the dean said, I was accepted to Brown University and I ended up graduating with highest honors in engineering. From there, I went on to do a host of things, including getting my MBA, like literally right here. Um, <laughs> yeah. But what my CV doesn't tell you is that all along my journey, I was often the only woman in the room. If you've ever been the only anything in a room, then you know that it comes with challenges, but also opportunities. It can be a challenge to feel like you're on an island, but it's also an opportunity to bring a different lived experience and a different perspective to the discussion, to make it richer. It's also an opportunity to bust stereotypes. TV shows like Succession and Billions depict successful American businesses run by rich patriarchs. This stereotype needs busting, especially because many recent studies have shown that companies with gender and ethnically diverse teams and boards outperform homogenous companies by a significant margin. I'll get to that data in a moment. But first, let me give you a parallel on wealth creation that you already understand. Equity in home ownership. We know that home equity is the largest source of wealth for the average American. We also know that access to capital for homes in the form of mortgages is not equally accessible to all Americans. That the rate of mortgage approvals differs significantly for people of color and women, especially for black home buyers. But even after making practices like redlining illegal, the legacy of neighborhoods of sameness persists. 
Today, the second greatest source of wealth for most Americans is their stock portfolio in the form of their IRAs. And while these investments generally do well in the long term, there's actually another problem with equity and access here. Most Americans' investments are in publicly traded companies. But access to equity shares in private companies is where real wealth is built. I'm talking about generational wealth, not the five or so percent annual return, well, maybe not this year, um, but over the long run that you get in your IRA. For example, the five largest market, companies, market cap companies in the US, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Tesla, were all venture-backed private tech startups. That means that long before they became household names, they were startups looking for investors. And the investors they found, the partners who got significant equity shares in these companies while they were still small and private, had one thing in common. They were largely homogenous. This is a problem for many reasons. For one, it widens the wealth gap, which we understand so clearly to be a problem in this country when it comes to things like home equity and equity ownership. It creates widely different neighborhoods, both physically and in terms of wealth. Secondly, it limits future investments to whatever that one homogenous group of people cares about or who they know. It perpetuates a cycle of more of the same. Third, and perhaps most importantly for all of you, homogenous ownership actually limits wealth creation. As I said earlier, more diverse companies actually generate more wealth and perform better. That's the second time I've made that statement, so let me back it up with something I'm fond of, data. Three separate McKinsey studies looked at 1,000 companies across 12 countries. Their findings were the same each and every time. Surprise, right? Gender and ethnically diverse executive teams and boards increased their returns to shareholders as measured by return on equity by 25 to 35 percent. That's significant. And McKinsey's not the only one. Similar findings have been reported by Google, Forbes, The Wall Street Journal, and many others. So taking that data in, what can you as tomorrow's business leaders do? Two simple tips. First, build a diverse company culture up front. When you're starting a company, you might think that the best approach is to hire people already in your network. To put it in GSB core speak, you'd be hiring based on propinquity. While the approach might be the fastest way to build a company, it may not be the best way. A Catalyst study shows that creating diverse teams from employees to executives increases your company's chances of success. A Google study produced similar results. Workplaces that foster inclusive teams with diversity, for example, in gender, ethnicity, LGBTQ+, and lived experience amongst employees, retain them at a higher rate and for longer. They also turn out to be more innovative and financially successful. This impacts your products, too. We've heard a lot lately about facial recognition software and the problems that it has analyzing darker skin tones. But did you know that when Apple created its first prototype of the iPhone, many of the women beta testers struggled to use the touch tone screen because of their long fingernails? I bring these examples up because in each case, a more diverse team creating these products might have caught these oversights earlier, saving companies time and money. Diversity matters on the executive side, too. During the decade plus I served as a managing partner at Excel, I was often told by entrepreneurs that I was the only female partner they had ever met during fundraising at any venture firm. I knew this had to change. It's one of the reasons my current company, A Crew Capital, is diverse across gender, ethnicity, and generations. Our diversity of lived experience and perspectives is front and center in our core tenants. As a result of this diverse network of contacts and potential, we have a diverse network of contacts and companies to invest in. So when entrepreneurs ask us to connect them with diverse talent, which they are increasingly asking for and valuing, we can more easily make those connections than the average venture firm. Our commitment to diversity drives our own success, too. For example, my Gen Z partners often have a very different take on a company than I do. And we've learned that both takes are critically important to avoid falling into groupthink. So building diversity into your team from day one is a real advantage. 
And the icing on the cake is when you do this and you provide equity to that diverse team, you are systematically diversifying access to who has equity shares in your private company, which gives a much broader set of stakeholders the potential to create generational wealth. The second thing you can do is seek diverse investors. When you raise money for a venture fund or for your company, just like with hiring, the fastest thing to do is to ask people already in your network and who can invest a minimum check to get to your goal faster. But requiring a minimum excludes many. For example, universities with multi-billion dollar endowments, like the parent institution of that other business school, have been investing in venture for decades. As a result, they get to reap its rewards. Venture, while volatile, in the long term has been the best performing asset class for endowments. Meanwhile, other institutions, like historically black colleges and universities, for example, cannot afford to meet those minimums, and they've been locked out. It's a catch-22. Great wealth can be generated by investing in venture, but to invest in venture, you need great wealth. This predicament is part of what led me to start ACRU's Diversify Capital Fund. With ACRU, our goal was to increase diversity in the people who get to invest in venture funds. In order to do that, we decided to lower our minimums and be intentional about including more individual executives. I'm proud to say that 70% of ACRU DCF's capital is from diverse individuals and diverse-led institutions. One of those diverse-led institutions is Fisk University, an HBCU in Nashville. The Fisk Jubilee Singers are actually the reason why Nashville is called Music City. It was founded 165 years ago, and it has never before had the capital to participate in a venture fund. And they're not alone. My own research into this problem compelled me to donate several million dollars of my own money to Fisk and other DEI-aligned entities so that they could invest in venture for the first time. We have to level the playing field. <laughs> Turning to the individual side, of the 300-plus individual investors in ACRU DCF, most of whom are entrepreneurs, executives, and leaders in their field, 85% identify as underrepresented. If that doesn't surprise you, maybe this will. Over half of DCF's investors are individual investors are participating in a venture fund for the very first time. Why? Largely because these CEOs and founders were never before asked to participate. ACRU was the first to invite them to invest, even though they're seasoned executives and repeat founders. I don't think my fellow VC fund leaders intentionally excluded these amazing executives, but if we want to improve access to wealth creation and equity ownership in tech companies, the same way we want to improve access to equity ownership in homes, we simply cannot accept unintentional exclusion. I admit it did take slightly longer to create DCF than if we had just reached out to our existing investors, but it was more than worth it. Our fund proves the pipeline problem is a myth. In a matter of a couple of months, we found 270 underrepresented executives who are leaders in their field and were willing to write checks in venture funds. The bottom line is this. Inclusion is a choice that pays significant returns to you and all of your shareholders. And you can quote me on that if you can remember my name. But even if you can't remember my name, that's totally okay. Just remember my advice. As you go into the world and create wealth for yourself and others, build diversity into your company from day one and seek diverse investors. These two simple tips will create a richer you, yes, but more importantly, a richer world where access to generational wealth is democratized and where diversity and greater opportunity is the norm. I am fully committed to intentional inclusion because I know it benefits all stakeholders. I hope I've convinced you to join me too, so that together we can live out the GSB motto, 
to change lives, change organizations, and change the world. Congratulations, graduates. It is now my great honor and pleasure to introduce the GSB PhD class of 2022. <clears throat> In addition, we are very glad to have the GSB PhD class of 2020 here so that after some delay, we can honor them as well. Our PhD program is small and exclusive with an admission rate well under 10%. These individuals came here as students dedicating themselves to two or three years of coursework, followed by an intensive research apprenticeship in their chosen fields. Having become true experts, they leave us as colleagues, setting out on a path to create new knowledge, which we know will help change the world of business and management for the better. Today, we formally celebrate the transition of these folks from students to future intellectual leaders who will play an important role in shaping our understanding of business and management. After their advisors place the hood of the Stanford Graduate School of Business on them, they will join us on the stage as we welcome them as colleagues into our profession. Diane Lee, Assistant Dean of the PhD program, will now read their names and their dissertation advisor will hood them. Adrian Apaza. Adrian's research examines how individuals make sense of and process information about products and corporations using categories and emotions. Ria Catapano. Ria's research explores how people's values and morals impact their own attitude change and their desire to change the attitudes of others on important politically polarized issues. <laughs> Wanning Chen. Wanning developed mathematical models and designed new machine learning algorithms to improve decision making with applications to healthcare operations, revenue management, and online platforms. <laughs> Charles Chu. Charles' research explores how the self creates individual well being and intergroup division. Selene Delacour. Selene's research aims to answer the question, why do women business owners earn less than men? Using field experiments, she focuses on the unique constraints faced by women business owners, such as childcare or business size. <laughs> Burke Can Denise. Burke's dissertation investigates how organizations evaluate the quality of their innovations in the context of digital experiments. <laughs> Minisu Erturk. Minisu's dissertation focuses on information and operations with applications to forensics and privacy. Naomi Fakaji. Naomi's research examines how people understand the causes of harm and how this impacts their response to issues such as climate change and societal inequality. 
Andrea Freund. Andrea's dissertation focuses on employee mental health and explores the challenges and opportunities that arise when companies promote mental health and well-being at work. Amy Huber. Amy studies how imperfect competition on the systemically important tri-party repo market affects monetary policy implementation. Enrique Ide. Enrique's research explores why successful established firms have trouble adopting disruptive innovations. Bilal Isla. Bilal's dissertation examines behavioral household financial decision making with a particular focus on household savings and emergency expenses. Porus Kambata. Porus's dissertation uses artificial intelligence to study how people make and manage first impressions. Dan Luo. Dan's research explores the optimal strategy to raise capital from a syndicate of investors who communicate strategically. <laughs> Abhi Mukherjee. Abhi's research examines the effects of technological innovation on firm growth, productivity, market structure, and competitiveness. <laughs> Jen Hiwan Park. Jen's research investigates how the choice environments can shape consumer decisions. Her work explores the ways that choice structures and decision framing can be harnessed to change consequential behaviors for good, such as donation, animal adoption, and sustainable behavior. Emily Reap. Em's research examines the critical role that social norms play in the ascension of dominant individuals to positions of power and influence. Hisu Ro. Hisu's dissertation is about monetary policy of the European Central Bank. Marcos Salgado. Marcus studies how social networks shaped political institutions throughout history. Sean Shi. Sean's dissertation investigates how improvement in the dissemination of corporate disclosures through technological innovations affects private firms' financing through initial public offerings. <laughs> Michelle Song. Michelle's research explores the impact of personalized recommendations on consumers' online shopping behaviors. Amelia Stilwell. <laughs> Amelia's dissertation examines white Americans' attitudes towards interracial relationships. Her work shows that, that gender stereotypes are partially responsible for negative attitudes towards interracial relationships involving white women. Cameron Taylor. Cameron's research uses economic tools and data to understand how to improve outcomes for disadvantaged foster children. Zachary Taylor. 
Zachary's research provides a game theoretic basis for understanding fake news and other forms of strategic deception. Irai Turkel. Irai's research explores strategic interactions and regulation in advertising and online media. Shia Wang. Shia's dissertation examines how gender differences in pay arise during the hiring process and whether current strategies, public and private, are effective in reducing them. <laughs> Hugh Xiaolong Wu. Hugh studies the impact of managerial practices on firm performance using within-firm field experiments. Vivian Xiao. Vivian's research examines how identities such as race and gender influence various organizational outcomes, such as leader evaluation and selection. Specifically, she studies how people enforce gender norms differently within and across racial groups. <laughs> Yilin Yang. Yilin's research explores what quantity of reserves should the Federal Reserve Bank supply to ensure efficient monetary policy implementation. <laughs> Octavia Zart. <laughs> Octavia's research examines how people's mindsets about the adequacy of their physical activity can influence their affect, behavior, health, and well-being. She also explores how these mindsets are shaped by people's social context, public health messages, and wearable technology. <laughs> Floyd Zhang. Floyd studies how information and identity interact with political institutions and shape political, politics, and the economy. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure as director of the Stanford MSX program to present this year's graduates who will receive the degree of Master of Science in Management. The mission of the MSX program is to provide experienced leaders, men and women who have spent at least eight years in professional and management roles the opportunity to prepare themselves for increasingly senior positions in organizations they will lead. MSX students participate in a full-time, year-long course of academic study, giving these students an all-too-rare chance for reflection and growth in the midst of an already accomplished career. On behalf of the administration of the program and the faculty who have taught them, join me in wishing each member of the MSX class of 2022 great fulfillment and success in the next phase of their careers. In honor of the service of former GSB Dean Robert Joss, Bob, take us, who is with us today, and Dean Joss was himself a student in this program, Anyway, the top 10% of the MSX class ranked by academic performance are designated as Robert Joss Scholars. As we read the names of the graduates, we will also announce if they have achieved the distinction of Robert Joss Scholar. 
Margaret Hayes, Associate Dean of the MBA and MSX programs, will now read our graduates' names while Dean Levin presents the diplomas. Marcel Abe. Mariana Lopez de Hedilla Alfonso. Mashare Alshaman. Vicente Adesia Lenis, Robert Joss Scholar. Daniela Bahamon Arango. Diago Bon. Julianne Brands. Renee Casey. Sebastian Cow. Kenneth DeLeon. Matan Derman. Syed Vala Dormiani Tabatabai. Kunal Doshi. Mika Eddy. Mo El Tanahi. Henry Annenberg Finkelstein. Maya Gerder, Robert Joss Scholar. Jennifer Heil. Yuchiero Izumi. Raj Jadav. Tarek Ziad Jalad. Patrick Liam Johnson. Cedric Kamayu. Karim Momad Abdullala Lalji. Isaac Ju Hyun Lee. Dorothy Lee. Michael Lynn. Alex McCauley. Jonathan D. Meyer. Christoph Michat, Robert Jaw Scholar. Ricardo Monastia. Carlos Montesinos. Oli Az Bejarano. Umberto Pedreo Modano. Benjamin Pettigrew. Tracy Pham. Suchit Rout. Padmanav Sadokan. Jose Ignacio Soto Velez. Archena Srivatsan. Sarah Lynn Teo. <laughs> Ronald Tong. Hiroaki Tori. 
George Kin Pansoy. Raj Vasudani, Robert Jaw Scholar. Satoko Wakasa. Pung Pung Wong. Gong Wu. Andrew T. Yakulis. Bo Xian Yi, Robert Jaw Scholar. Dmitry Zaninovich. <laughs> Ricardo Jesus Sendajas. <laughs> Joanna Chong. <laughs> Yevgeny Zanadov. <laughs> Zhu Gongwei, Robert Jaw Scholar. Among the Robert L. Joss scholars, one student's academic achievement places them at the top of the MSX class. This student is awarded the George G.C. Parker Prize, named in honor of GSB faculty and former program director, Professor George Parker, who is here today. The graduate receives a certificate, a cash award, and their name will be on a plaque displayed at the GSB. <laughs> yeah, a, a plaque. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, the recipient of the George G.C. Parker Prize is Christoph Michot. I want to make it very clear that we did not just hand him the same stuff we give guest speakers at the end of class. <laughs> and now we move to the MBA class of 2022. <laughs> Distinguished guests, faculty, staff, Families and friends, the MBA students gathered before us today have engaged in a transformational experience. They have acquired solid foundations in general management and have pursued deeper studies in their areas of interest. They have engaged in personal growth and built relationships that will last a lifetime. They have helped the school and the community in many ways. While their experience here required navigating the challenges of a global pandemic, that changed classes and other activities in countless ways, they persevered and formed bonds that may well be stronger than the MBA classes that came before them. They are an impressive group and are ready and worthy to join the ranks of our illustrious alumni. Therefore, it is my great honor and privilege to present to you the Stanford MBA class of 2022. <laughs> Hold on, I'm not quite done here. As you leave, I hope your memories of the GSB will remain fresh and that you will stay involved with the school. Our alumni played an important role in your academic experience ranging from serving as judges in the Executive Challenge to acting as mentor in entrepreneurial courses. I hope that you too will engage with the GSB's academic mission as alumni and give your time and expertise generously to future classes. 
You will leave your own legacy and play a part in bringing the GSB experience to future generations as other alumni have done before you. All of you have undoubtedly heard of R.J. Miller. R.J. served in the U.S. Air Force during the Second World War among the whiz kids, many of whom moved with R.J. and revolutionized Ford Motor Company. R.J. became president of Ford and then later the much admired fourth dean of the GSB from 1968 to 1978. In honor of Dean Miller's service, the top 10% of the class ranked by academic performance are designated as R.J. Miller Scholars. As we read the names of the graduates, we will also announce if they have achieved the academic distinction of R.J. Miller Scholar. In the case of joint degree students who are walking today but not graduating, we will identify those who currently are in the top 10% of the class. <laughs> A little more work to be done for those people. Okay. <laughs> The late Dean Miller has also founded the Certificate in Public Management and Social Innovation Program at the GSB. The Certificate Program educates leaders who understand societal issues, design for and evaluate impact, and understand the specificities of the management of social organizations in both the private and public sector. Today's Certificate graduates take the spirit of our GSB motto, change lives, change organizations, change the world, to its full potential. This year, we have approximately 150 recipients. Their names are listed in the commencement program. Graduates' names will now be read by Kirsten Moss, Assistant Dean of MBA Admissions. As I was saying, graduates' names will now be read by Kirsten Moss, Assistant Dean of MBA Admissions and Financial Aid, and by Jamie Shine, Assistant Dean of the Career Management Center. Graduates will receive their diplomas from Dean Levin. Kirsten and Jamie, would you please begin? Jagriti Agrawal. Martin Aguinness. Kelsey Ayala. Sarah Alexander. Kamil Ali. Luife Allende. Alejandra Alvarez Hanemeyer, R.J. Miller Scholar. Travis Martin Anderson. Maya Andrews, R.J. Miller Scholar. Julian Ateortua Munez. Bradford James Austin, R.J. Miller Scholar. Marcia Austin, R.J. Miller Scholar. Caitlin Bob. Karen Bart. Christina Baladis. <laughs> Jamie Basili. <laughs> Andrew Barnett, R.J. Miller Scholar. <laughs> Joey Barnett. <laughs> Lauren Barrier. Nicholas Fadi Bashur. Andrew Alexander Christian Beck. 
Kendall Alexandra Beckett, R.J. Miller Scholar. <laughs> Ashley Schaffer Beeler. <laughs> Carolyn Begleiter. <laughs> Andres Benavides Montero. <laughs> Kate Bender. Alexander Samuel Bennett, R.J. Miller Scholar. Catherine Berner. Vanessa Tamar Burnick. Ravi Bhatt. Robert Todd Binkowski. Rustam Zersis Birdie. <laughs> Jacob Cabe Blazer. <laughs> Nicole Blake. <laughs> Madeline Blocky. <laughs> Garib Bose. Benjamin Voss. <laughs> Tyler Alexandra Brandon. <laughs> Tilo Braun, RJ Miller Scholar. Aaron Brennan Dittman. Emily Casey Brown. Spencer Brown. Jason Bouchel. Dr. Sarah Buckner. Kate Bulesbach. Bruno Bueno Correa Martins. Daniel Francisco Bujanos. Kellyanne Hikari Burlidge. James Satoshi Burns. Will Butcher. Joe Byers. Emily Camburn. Stephen Cameron. Vinny Chakrather. Alexander Scott Chang. Christy Elisa Chang. Alexander Chen. Ray Nathaniel Chen. Victoria Chi, RJ Miller Scholar. Dr. Swathi Chidambaram. Lillian Childress. Cassie Koash. Christopher Kevin Cobham. Jordan Conger. Benjamin Conrad. Allison Cheyenne Cowie. Mateo Creamer. Robert Tyler Crown. 
Gabriela Diagosto. Laura Desaro. David Dade. Ying Dai. Lola Damsky. Leila de Guzman. RJ Miller Scholar. William Austin Dean, R.J. Miller Scholar. Mario Luis Del Cueto. Juan Gabriel Delgado. Max Denning. Tessa Denning, R.J. Miller Scholar. Michael Patrick DeSantis, R.J. Miller Scholar. Matt Devine. Jillian Dickinson. Harrison DeGia. Diana Ding. Edison Ding. Hillary Doe. Catherine Donahue. Donahoe. Sarah Donaldson. Tony Eugene Douglas Jr. Annie Dow. Nick Draghi. Alan Drawer. Yasmin Dunsky. Zoe Duran. Marcus Edwards. Alexandra Athena Idol. Omer Omar El Sudani. RJ Miller Scholar. Divya Elango. Johanna Erickson. Catherine Evers. Usama Fadil, RJ Miller Scholar. Kimi Loluwa Fafawara. John Thomas Fagan. Hannah Farr. Jonathan Faubert. Kevin Ardian Fauzi. RJ Miller Scholar. Stephen Ferreira. Nicole Ducinaya Fesbach. Mackenzie Lauren Finley. Grace Fish. <laughs> Mackenzie Sean Folan, RJ Miller Scholar. James Fong. 
Chaz Foot. Josie Fox. John Foy, R.J. Miller Scholar. David Henry Franks. Colin Glende Frazier, R.J. Miller Scholar. Andrew Fryman. Noah Frick. Gonzalo Gallardo. Juliette Garay. Omar Adolfo Garza. Royce Jean. William George. Victoria Germanova. Scott Levin Gesundheit. Ruby Gaston. Whitney Glick. Ritij Sanche Goel. Alex Gold. Benjamin Scott Samuel Goldwater. Facundo Golinski. Susie Gom. Cece Gong. Eva Gonzalez. Julia Caroline Goodman. Caroline Michelle Gray, R.J. Miller Scholar. <laughs> Stephanie Grayson. Devin Greenberg. Nina Elise Greenabom. Devin Grossman. Pilar Guerra Ibarra. Mason Maurice June Gunter. Ruticha Gupta, R.J. Miller Scholar. Matan Gueta. Angela Jiun Ha. Tara Christine Haas. Dylan Holman. Andrew Leon Hanna, RJ Miller Scholar. Hannes Harnock. Devin Hedgepeth. Michael Hyder. Kevin Scott Helgren. Caitlin Honda. Rebecca Hauser. Greer Bullington Howard. Julianne Howell. 
Summer Hu. Cindy Huang. Alwyn Hoy. Megan Hunter. Jonathan Lloyd Hurwitz, RJ Miller Scholar. Jenna Hussein. Kareem Ibrick, RJ Miller Scholar. Lana Udil Idris. Kemi Eco. Mirel Iture. Sagar Iyer. Sanjay Iyer. Vidya Madahan Ayengar. Andrew Jacobsberg. Rebecca Joe Jacobson. Adish Jane. Suhani Jalota. Christoph Yaman. Jeffrey Jang. Durga Jayaraman. Alvina Jao, RJ Miller Scholar. Warfa Jibril. Sarah Johnson. Brian Jones. Caroline Jung. Monica Jezviak. Roberto Enrique Cafati Santos. Ali Amarali Kasim Laka. Vina Katragada. Antoni Kacher Vera. Diego Kaolen. Adam Kepler, RJ Miller Scholar. Adrian Carrister. Daniel Kim. Soyon Kim. Kirthan Ranjan Kinney. Ahmed Sarat Karisi. Morgan Kiss. Henry Bowl Klingenstein. Ryosuke Kabayashi. John Colliker. Eric Coton. Benjamin Kramer. Jason Kramers. Morgan Lai. 
Mickey Kingston Linovich. Eliza LaJoy. Jillian Lanny. Santiago Larain Barona. Jack Laszlo. Nick Laub. Haley Lee. Richard Hancock Lee, Jr. Sasha Carolina LaFleur. L. Alexandra Lehman. Sydney Mackenzie Lehman. Lucas Alexander Levine. Eric Allen Lee. George Lee. Alexa Sarah Leoto. Kristen Lim. Amelia Gia Wan Ling. Nicholas Linz. Samuel Linville. Connie Liu. Monica Mena Liu. Andrew Lowe. Kike Lores. Philip James Lowry. Connor Daniel Love. Nina Liu. Roy Chun Jang Liu. Mary Ellen Luck. Morgan Burl Lundblad. Jesse Lee Lusa. Stephen Lynch. <laughs> Levi Corey Malik. <laughs> Dr. Harpreet Singh Mangat. <laughs> Gustavo Adolfo Marquez Jr. Ryan Martin. <laughs> Melissa Martz. <laughs> Drew Robert Marks. <laughs> Abigail Matheson. <laughs> Benjamin Matthews. Zoe Claire Mattingly. Eric Matson. Susanna Maybank. Julia McCusick. William McLaughlin. Will McTie. B. Danica Medina. Evan Mendez, RJ Miller Scow. 
Katherine Metzinger, RJ Miller Scholar. Amanda Christine Meyer. Orly Mihaile. Clifford Thomas Miller. Kia Mirshahi. Pia Mishra. Kasioa Baka Majukanli. Justine Moore. Alicia Morales. Taiki Morita. Nandini Mulahi. Yannick Kabungo Mulumba. Jaime Munoz. Allison Nom. Elizabeth Nakamura. Anna Nakayasu. Yosef Negusi. Amanda Nielsen. Arnie Newman. Eric Chien Nuvalski. Chloe C. Ting Nai. Fawn Nguyen. Viet Nguyen. Maka Nguyenya. Dylan Nugent. Hannah C. O'Neill. Connor O'Mara. William Oberndorf, R.J. Miller Scholar. Chisholm Obi Okoye. Annika, rather, Annika Osterly. Amri Ophir. Michael Oguike. Izuna Okwankwa. Melanie Ormojola Olua Okunai. Carolina Oliveira. Joel Ostick. Pablo Ovaya Bambaj. Vaskar Pahari, R.J. Miller Scholar. Caitlin Dong Chin Pang. David Pardewi. Unmin Julia Park. Sachin Patel. Mariano Payano, R.J. Miller Scholar. Sigali Perelson. 
Taylor Ariel Phillips. <laughs> Lindsay Picard. <laughs> Udit Palay. <laughs> Layla Purbe. <laughs> Yvonne Plotter. Drake Pooley. Pooja Pradhan. Robin Prendes. Caroline Pringle. Casey Lee Prohaska. Edwin Leon Chan. Florin Radu. Varsha Jayalakshmi Raghavan. Regina Ramos. Neil Rangwani. Mansoor Aslam Rator. Marissa Reddy. Neil Renz, RJ Miller Scholar. Paola Retes Pineda. Glenn Maxwell Richardson. Dan Ritchie. Danny Rifkin. Dylan Barrett Robbins. Devon Brito Robertson. Emily Michelson Rogers. Nicole Rojas. Miriam Rollock. Ricardo Rosales. Tommy Rosencrantz. <laughs> Olivia Claire Rosenthal. <laughs> Megan Rosansky. <laughs> Peter Rosansky. <laughs> Sarah Runkel. Nick Saltarelli. Alex Salton. Robert Joseph Scales. Tamar Shamroth Lips. Charlotte Shell. Jeremy Scott. Will Scott. Thomas Singmani. Kelly Grace Shan. Cage Shannon. Kelsey Sheldon. Andrea Shen. Joy Yu Shen.
Joyce Shi. Matthew Ruben Schorser. Siddharth Shrikanth. Hannah Sieber. Francis Simpson Allen. Katrina Slenkova. Angela Smith. Mirren Snell, R.J. Miller Scholar. Amanda Claire So. Archna Samshetti. Caroline Ann Soar, R.J. Miller Scholar. Nancy Song. William Sorg. Fernanda Sotil. Alexander Talbot Southmaid. Anthony Spelty, R.J. Miller Scholar. Emily Stebbins. Caleb Stenholm. Ava Ivanova Stoicheva. Christopher Johannes Strohmeyer, R.J. Miller Scholar. Franco Sterla. Prow Suchato. Sydney Sykes. Mari Takino. Kylie Tan. Margot Kramer Taylor. Joan Elizabeth Thompson, R.J. Miller Scholar. Anka Tomofta. Joseph Oliver Tobin III. Patrick Franz Toth. Blair Trachtenberg. Chantel C. Conrad Joseph Ukrapina. Chenadum Umachi. Natalie Urban. Maria Van Dongen. Jean-Pierre Casnel Vertil. Joe Vider. Molly Marie Vider. Jordi Vila. Saravia Vishnu Batla. Philip Von Hahn. Zach Walters. Annie Wang. Jeffrey Wang. 
Michelle Mayshall Wang, R.J. Miller Scholar. <laughs> Sylvia Wang. Matthew Gregoire Wardrop. William Christopher Worley. Tanner Water Street. John Harold Watson, R.J. Miller Scholar. Austin Welch. Sophia Wang. Brent Curtis Westbrook. Benjamin White, Jr. Bridget Marie Wilkie. Jacob Ryan Werfel. Kai, uh, Kevin Wittenberg. Michael Wolcott. Kyle Stewart Wollstonecroft. Michelle Shea. Shelly Shu, R.J. Miller Scholar. Derek Yan. Hank Yan, R.J. Miller Scholar. Stephanie E. David Ying. Nancy Wenjar Yu. Michael Yules. Davida Zanchi. Gregory Zegas. Lucas Zelnick. Lily Zhang. Jenna Zerker. Jay Zhang. Jeff Zhang, R.J. Miller Scholar. <laughs> Melissa Wenjia Zhang. <laughs> Jonah Zhang. <laughs> Stephanie Zhou. <laughs> Joanna Zhu. Ahmed Zifzaf. Anna Helen Zimmerman. Irene Zoe. Nate Zupan, RJ Miller Scholar. We will now present the MBA awards. Nominated and chosen by their peers, the recipient of the Ernest C. Arbuckle Award is a second year student who, by their active participation, initiative, leadership, and personal integrity, is judged as having contributed most to the fulfillment of the goals of the Stanford Graduate School of Business in their actions both within school and society. The recipient receives a cash prize and also has their name on a plaque on display at the GSB. We, we are delighted to have Susan Arbuckle, the daughter of Ernie Arbuckle, with us today. Susan? This year's recipient of the award is Drake Pooley.
<laughs> Sorry, you will have to accept me instead. Congratulations, Drake. This is incredibly well-deserved. Thank you so much to Drake, to his co-president, Emily, and to all of... and to all of the other student leaders who made this class, this experience so much better for all of you sitting there, so thank you. The, Ale the Alexander Robichek Student Achievement Award in Finance was established to honor Professor Robichek's outstanding contribution to the teaching of finance at the GSB from 1960 until his death in 1978. The award is given to an MBA student selected by the finance faculty for outstanding achievements in their finance courses. The recipient receives the award and also has their name on a plaque on display in the GSB. All right, that, let's move on from that one. <laughs> this year, I am so thrilled to tell you that the winner this year is Caroline Soar. Finally, among the R.J. Miller scholars, one student's academic achievements placed them at the top of the class. This student is designated as the Henry Ford II Scholar and receives, along with the Miller Scholar Scroll, a significant cash award and their name on a plaque <laughs> displayed at the GSB. This year's recipient of the award is Evan Mendez. Honored guests, faculty, staff, families, and friends, we have reached the conclusion of our ceremony. <laughs> Class of 2022, would you please stand? What a journey it has been. Let's have one final round of applause for the GSB Class of 2022. Let's go, 22. Guests, please remain seated, and graduates, you may recess.